What you are about to listen to is a recorded version of my webinar ChatGPT plus HR equals true. This was recorded in June 2023, so technology and examples might have evolved beyond this. So you have to take it for what it is. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates. Same goes for Spotify. Hit that subscribe button if you want future episodes of this video semi-audio podcasty thing. But without further ado, let's head over to the webinar. Welcome all. Welcome to this presentation about chat, GPT and HR. I'm just going to introduce myself shortly. So I am Johannes Sundlu and I started working 10 years ago with HR at this company, Academic Work. I then progressed to work for this company, Spotify, which I think many of you might be aware of. And I worked as an HR VP for Spotify for almost six years. Then I started my own company and I worked with all of these companies in various HR positions. And now I work at Avalanche Studios Group as the senior HR manager. So this is something I do outside of work. This is obviously not the representation of Avalanche Studios Group. I need to say that obviously. But yeah, this is just a passion project for me. I'm not here to sell anything. I'm not here to give you all the ins and outs and truth about ChatGPT. I will give you my version and hopefully that will inspire you. And I come from the HR practitioner side. And as you also can, probably can hear, I'm not a native English speaker. So bear with me on this as well. But yeah, that's just shortly about me. If you want to read the full sort of ins and outs of my career, you are on LinkedIn, you're more than welcome to click on my LinkedIn page and uh, yeah, read more about me and uh, that is. So why me then? This is an article in Swedish because that's a good question. Why do I do this? I've always been interested in, as long as I can remember in new ways of working, new ways of thinking about how can we as HR get better? How can we be more forward leaning and how can we learn new technologies? And this is an article I wrote long over 10 years ago about how you get an account on LinkedIn, basically. So it was a guide on how to do that because at the time LinkedIn was fairly new, at least in Sweden, and people needed sort of guidance on how to find their way into LinkedIn. So this is something that has been with me for a very long time. And as I said, I come from the HR practitioner side. I'm very keen on that we help each other out on diving into these new technologies, no matter if it's LinkedIn or ChatGPT, as we're here to talk about today. So that's a little bit of uh, about me. And I, yeah, as I said, if you're super curious to know more about me, yeah, ask me anything <laughs> later on <laughs> and I'll be happy to explain that. And But why this webinar then? What's the aim? What do I aim at least with why I do this? I hope to spark curiosity because, yeah, there's a ton of articles, ton of podcasts and whatnot about chat uh, GPT out there. But I hope to even further spark curiosity on act how to actually get started. How do you get going from an HR standpoint with ChatGPT? How do you actually do it? And what can you do? So spark curiosity. That's one of the main goals that I hope that I achieve here today. And also create understanding. So how to use it, the ins and outs, the pitfalls and whatnot. But I also rely on you, the crowd, to help me out here. We're well over 1000 people here to share knowledge and to get the discussion going because I, I see this as a sort of pivotal moment for not only us in HR but us as a society. So we have this opportunity now to create the future and how do we do that then? What do we want the future to be? So that's also what I'm hoping to aspire to. It may be a very broad <laughs> and overarching view of what I hope to achieve here as well. We'll see where we, where we get. But yeah, with that said, let's dive into it. And I should also mention this, if you want this presentation and links that I will talk about, go to chatgptnhr.com, sign up there. Obviously, I won't spam you. I won't sell the email list to some random provider somewhere out north or whatever. Like, I will only send you the presentation and the links and that's it. But obviously, in order to do that, I need your email. Hence, you need to send that to me. And I'm also a bit curious on what companies I have listening to this as well today. But yeah it's free I'll send it afterwards more than happy to do that and you can use it as you see fit as well like I have no problem if you take that presentation and share it with others for example so feel free to use it as you see fit as I said here to share here to inspire here to discuss that's what we're aiming for here okay now let's dive into what is chat GPT first and foremost it's a form of artificial intelligence and you hear the sort of 
acronym AI being thrown around and I just wanted to state obviously that it also stands for artificial intelligence and that might sound like oh that's everyone knows that. Not everyone knows that so I really want to start with the basics. AI it's artificial intelligence it's computer made intelligence that is so it's computers that learns from data if you simplify it and Bear with me on this one. There will be a lot of simplifications throughout this presentation because it's one hour. I'm not a AI mastermind. So if you need more meat to, okay, what is it really? I suggest you do, for example, one of the courses that Elements of AI has put up with. And they explain this in much more depth and much more details. But to simplify it, it's computers that learns from data. That's it. And I see that you share emails in the LinkedIn comments now. Don't do that. You should never share emails. There will be vendors nudging your emails from that. Go to chatgpdnhr.com instead. I will send you the links. I'm more than happy to. But yeah, that's more of a safe harbor. That's why I created that link. So yeah, uh, please do that. Don't share it in the comments. Okay. And then it's also a large language model. And what does that mean? Yeah, it means that it has learned its language from a vast different a majority of different sources, like a trillion sources throughout the internet. So it's everything from Reddit to your, your old homepage, for example. It has looked at that and tried to internalize that information. And then it is a generative, generative pre-trained transformer, which means that it then out of that data that it has learned from internet, it tries to predict, okay, what's the next sort of reasonable step if someone asks, for example, can you create this job ad? Okay, what's the next reasonable step in that process? And it tries to predict that. So it comes pre-trained transformer mindset that it will try to predict as best as possible what's the next sequence out of that. I know this is a very sort of rudimentary and very simplified version of what AI and also what ChatGPT is, but it gives at least some context, I hope at least, to okay, what goes into this model. Yeah, here we are, that's the basic. And if you wanna simplify it even more, you can think about it when, like when you were a kid. So basically when you were a kid, hopefully you had parents or other grown-ups around you that said, okay, that's a balloon and that's not a balloon. Uh, and then you internalized that, oh, that's a balloon. I know what a balloon looks like. And then you, you saw another balloon and you said the balloon, white balloon, but yeah, that was actually a red balloon. And you had someone then correcting you as well. And it's, I think it's important to remember that all these models, all that we talk about, someone pushed them out the door, someone helped them get going. And it's very important to remember that, that they are not subjective. They come from an object, objective, uh, sorry, they're not objective, they're subjective. They come from a subjective sort of mindset where someone has said, that's this and this is that. And that's very good to remember when talking about these models or when thinking about these models, that they're not super, yeah, there's, <laughs> I confused the two now. They are not objective, they're subjective. And who's behind ChatGPT? This is the team, basically. It's a picture from 2019 and it's a company called OpenAI. And they started out as a sort of, yeah, more of or more or less a, like a non-profit that they wanted to create AI for the good of humanity. And that has, I would, one can argue now that it's slightly deviated from that, that they still run a profit, obviously, and yeah, they need all the cash they can because it's very expensive to run this generative AI model. But that's who they are. They, like, they come from this non-profit background and they aim to do this for society. And to some extent, they still do, I believe. But yeah, one can always argue around the actual intent behind that. And one of the most sort of significant backers of OpenAI right now is Microsoft. And that's also good to bear in mind that they are large, they have a large embedded interest in chat uh, GPT and also open AI, which we will talk a bit more about with later. And uh, I obviously stole this from the internet uh, from John Norsta, but it says that this is the most important chart in a hundred years and this is the adoption of uh, them and compared to other technologies out there. So for example, on Instagram, Spotify, Facebook, Twitter and Netflix, like how does it compare in terms of growth? and it grew insanely fast, which I think we can all attribute to the fact that, yeah, it's a magical experience if you tried it, but also that it's in this day and age where news travel fast, it was the perfect storm for ChatGPT to get going. So yeah, it's, the growth has been insane. And talking about growth, it's hard to tell exactly how many users they actually have these days. The last known number is 200 million users, but that was, yeah, it was around when this chart was published actually, like in February. It's not 
it's not 100% set in stone how many users there are. And if you ask ChatGPT, but also if you ask and Google on the internet, like approximately a billion, they say, but no one really knows. But yeah, it's estimated that you could, you could at least guess that it's a lot of people. And people and to our sort of, and we need to think about that people in our work, like if we are in HR, and I think most of you are, then people will, will use it some, in some capacity or another. It's also good to know that there, there's different versions of ChatGPT. So if you're running the free version of ChatGPT, you have GPT 3.5. And if you do the paid version, you have GPT 4. And you can think about them as incremental updates. So it's like the iPhone you probably have or any other phone you have. They get better through updates. Same goes with GPT. So a new update means that hopefully it's a better version. It's also important before we, I will get into, I know this, if you never heard of uh, GPT, like this could be confusing. What does he mean with 3.5 and 4? I will get into that. Just wanted to sort of preface that before we dive into it. But it's, this is also very good to know before we dive into actually how we use it. It only knows stuff up until September 2021, unless you pay for the connected beta version. But if you use the free version, it only knows stuff until up until September 2021. And that is very important to remember and think about because obviously it sets limitation to what it can answer. So if you need a sort of a relevant answer, for example, if you need the latest in labor law, yeah, it's probably not a good idea to ask ChatGPT about the latest in labor law because it won't know the latest in labor law. And so that's also good to remember. Yes, the recording will be available. I read questions like on the side <laughs> from every now and then. And yes, the recording will be available. I will also publish this on YouTube and on Spotify if you don't want to watch it on LinkedIn again for some reason. Yeah, a bit of a preface. I know that this, as I said, this is, this, is, this is not the sort of the most extensive, obviously in-depth course about what is AI, but I strongly recommend that you use elements of AI. It's free. It's a super great course available to every, everyone. And yeah, it's a really good course if you want to understand more about the ins and outs of AI. But the big question is then, how do you do? How do you use ChatGPT? It's fairly simple. You can actually see this is the actual window that you use. And so ChatGPT looks like this. You go to chat.openai.com and you register. It's as simple as creating a social media account or whatever you uh, are used to creating. You need your email addresses. I've seen recommendations actually for HR people specifically not to use or for people in general using it in work to not use their work email. I don't know if that is being overly secretive or not, but yeah, I think it's a good thing. And I don't use my own, my personal, I use my personal email for signing up. So that could be something to have in mind as well. And also good to know that you can access it through mobile now. They released an, a mobile app, I think it was like 20 days ago, so three weeks ago, where they released an, a mobile app. And with this mobile app, you can also talk to ChatGPT, which is quite a fascinating sort of thing to do, I think, uh, because it's a haptic uh, feedback uh, loop on that. So when it answers, it, it's like almost some, someone is typing on your phone. So yeah, I highly suggest if you haven't downloaded it, try it out as well. It's a very intuitive experience. But you, before you do anything, as mentioned, in regards to the email address you use when you sign up, think about security. And I really want to emphasize this. Never ever share sensitive information with ChatGPT. And we in HR, we handle sensitive information. I think we all know that it could be as simple as someone applying for a job. That is sensitive information or like more obvious sensitive information, someone being sick or being on rehab or whatever it might be. Don't share that. Don't share personal information or sensitive information at all, like the latest quarterly report that's not publicly available or whatever it might be. Think twice and think about if this were to come out in the open, could I stand for it? Is this uh, like knowledge that I'm fine that, you know, leave on a coffee table or whatever on, on a coffee shop? Like think about security hard and long before you do anything. But yeah, I think I still think we should use it. I don't think that the right way is to, to ban it, but we need to be really mindful about this, obviously, going into using it. And there's a lot of a lot of companies uh, banning and uh, but OK. So you registered, you, th you thought about sensitive information and now you're ready to use it. Okay, so how do you do it? This is just a demo. And for people who have used this since November, this, do something else, grab a new cup of coffee or whatever you need to do in the meantime. It's 18 seconds, so it won't be super long. But yeah, this is just a demonstration of, okay, what can ChatGPT do and how fast can it do it? And this is not speed up in any way. This is real time. And you'll see it's a bit revealing for my own part. I'm a slow typer. So, I wanted ChatGPT to create a job ad, 
for a data engineer at Volvo. And here we go. I obviously chose Volvo because I'm a proud Swede, but yeah, this is, this is read time. That was read time. And that took nine seconds for ChatGPT to generate. And I mean, it had no information basically, just the data engineer, the job title and Volvo. It guessed whatever it guessed, but it was a fair result. Uh, you, you couldn't see it, but it was a fair result at least. But I think it says something about the blazing speed of yeah, just how this will progress. If it takes nine seconds to write a job ad, yeah, and the technology is what, seven months old, what will the future have in store for us? So that was a very practical example of ChatGPT for those of you who haven't seen it. And when you start interacting, I did a very basic version now of how you do this. And uh, the basic version was that I just, put, you know, I, I just wrote in, do this and do that. And that is called prompts. And you interact with ChatGPT by providing instructions and you, then you prompt it. So you, they, it's called prompts. And basically they, it states what uh, you want ChatGPT to do. And the more specific you are and the more information you provide, the more you will get back. And what do I mean with that? For example, this. So this is me prefacing ChatGPT as a recruitment GPT. And you should act as this then. So you should act as recruitment expert and you possess all the skills and expect, uh, the, that an ex, uh, exceptional recruiter has, including both technical, interpersonal abilities and whatnot. So you see, I preface it along with a quite a long text. Okay, this is the framing that I want you to use ChatGPT. Uh, and then ChatGPT knows, ah, this is the information I should take in context and I know what I'm supposed to do. So the more you, you utilize that, the better results you will yield, hopefully. And this is another example, not just not to take uh, recruitment examples because recruitment examples is quite, yeah, there's quite a lot of them, but you can also use it for like, such as training GPT, for example. So you create a learning and development specific chatbot, uh, more or less, that sort of creates whatever task you ask it to do. And that's all good and dandy, like you create those prompts. I have a prompt library as well, which is also something that I'll send out in, in that if you sign up on ChatGPT and hr.com, don't drop it in the email here, your email in the comments. But if you sign up there, I'll send you the prompt library, to you. prompt library as well, which it's, I don't know how many prompts, but a lot of prompts that you can use if you want to or to get you started. But don't forget that it's a chat. So you need to drop your Google mindset. And this was perhaps, the most prevalent thing that I did at, when I started using ChatGPT that I treated it as I treat Google. So I asked it one thing and then when I didn't get the response I wanted, I just started over completely. So I just started a new window saying, oh, thank you. Now I ask this, uh, but it doesn't work that way. I can interact with it. I can say, yeah, that wasn't the thing that I lo was looking for. Can you please provide me with this instead? This wasn't the right angle. Can you look at it from this angle? And it's, you can go bounce back and forth until it yields the result that you were looking for. And it's not that you should take it as a truth, but I use it as a companion. So I bounce back and forth with it. So it often plays devil's advocate, for example. Like I have an idea and I, or something that I want to present, for example, for, to, a, to the board. And then I say like, this is my sort of main arguments, obviously not secret information, but yeah, this is my main arguments or this is the thing I'm thinking about presenting what are common sort of pitfalls or common suggestions against what I'm proposing. And then you can bounce back and forth. So that's what I'm mainly utilizing it. But don't forget it, it's a chat. So you can talk back and that's the beauty of it. And it knows everything, it really does for good and bad. As I said, like you need to preface it, you need to contain it and you need to set the scene for it. But it basically knows everything and nothing. And yeah, it's both scary and fantastic, I think. And this is the first example I used ChatGPT for. We were going to terminate an employee in Germany and I obviously couldn't ask ChatGPT straight off the bat, like, hey, help me terminate this employee. But what I could do is that I could ask it, okay, what are good and sensible questions to ask an employment lawyer in Germany regarding this? And then it gave me a list. Okay, these are the good questions you can ask. This is, this is where you need to focus your efforts, which then in turn, made the, and I've never, I never terminated a German employee prior to this, the, but the German employment lawyer, she said, you've done this so many times, right? This is perfect questions. And I was like, yeah, uh, and this was fairly new. So I couldn't solely say, oh, it's ChatGPT, uh, because I didn't know 
exactly if that was appropriate or not. Now I would have said it like immediately, but at the time it was early December last year, a bit more sensitive. But yeah, it saved us a lot of time, obviously, because we could go straighter to the point, which I think is a great use case for ChatGPT. And this is also something I've been doing in the past as well. So develop a remote work policy in Romania, create an English version and a Romanian version. So if I create an English version, as well as a Romanian version, I know it, it won't deviate too much from each other. So I then can at least fact check, okay, this sounds reasonable. Obviously, I won't have to, or I can't, just publish it right away saying, okay, this is now our new Romanian remote work policy. That won't do, but I can take it to someone who's knowledgeable in Romanian labor law and say, hey, this is how we're thinking about this. Is this sensible or not? And it takes me, it, it takes me a bit on the path. Like it, if it takes me to 70% completion, that's 70% completion. That's only 30% that I've then need to put in. If that's 10 hours of work, I just save myself seven hours of work. That's amazing. Perfect. And this is anonymized data from those who have left our organization. What conclusions can you draw from the data? Because it's amazing on drawing conclusions on the data and seeing patterns, obviously. That's what it does best. So if you have anonymized data that is non-intrusive, obviously you can share it with ChatGPT, check with your uh, legal department first maybe, but still, like if it's anonymized and it's, yeah, it's a bit randomized as well in, in, at best, then it's a perfect use case as well to use it for. This is also one of my favorite things to do. Explain this text to me if I were 10 years old, because obviously sometimes even I, or perhaps most of the time, it's very like you get a lot of text sent to you or you want to read something on the, on the internet, like a PDF or something, and you can then turn, it, turn to ChatGPT and say, hey, this is probably a good thing for me to read. Can you explain it like a, to me if I were 10 years old? And then it congests the meat and make it useful for you, which is a fantastic thing and saves also a lot of time. And you can also use it to this, act as a wise and knowledgeable mentor to an HR manager, act as a coach, for example. Obviously, once again, be, be wary of that you don't share sensitive information, but I use it as a coach. So we have a coach section every Friday. I check in with ChatGPT. I have a very <laughs> defined prompt that I use, which then asks me, how's the week been going? Have I achieved what I set out to achieve and whatnot? So the ins and outs of all of that, I can ask ChatGPT and it acts Obviously, it doesn't replace like a full-blown mentor, but yeah, to some extent, it makes me think at least. So a perfect use case for me at least. But once again, be wary of that you don't share sensitive information. And obviously, this is just a handful of examples. And what I want to say with all of this is that the, it's only your imagination that sets the limit. You can ask it more or less whatever you want. And obviously now I haven't mentioned the risks, which we will come to in a bit. And I've seen people mention it as well, but it's, it is more or less only the imaginations or your imaginations that sets the limit. Because as said, for good and bad, it knows everything and nothing. So you can ask it whatever, more or less whatever you want, but you should never take it for the full truth because yeah, it has its limitations. But yeah, it's, it's quite fascinating. But what about the risks then? I think we need to talk about the risk, obviously, because you have obviously closely connected risks to all of this. And the first and foremost is obviously bias. It's known to be biased. When it started out, it was heavily biased. It always took a carpenter for being a man and a nurse for being a woman, for example, like by default. So it had strong biases. And if you think about it, that's not it's not super strange because it's, it has learned from us and we have biases. So obviously we will enforce those biases when we train these models. But yeah, it has biases. It's also sometimes hallucinates. And what do I mean with that? Yeah, well, it makes up stuff when it, it, it tries to guess stuff about the things that you're asking it about. And if it doesn't know a straight answer it, or it's just a muddy or I don't know, I don't know, have a bad day, then it makes up stuff that it thinks it's, it's, it thinks that it's answering the question, but in reality, it's just nonsense. So it just draws something out of the pocket randomly. So it hallucinates. Some people call it lying as well. I don't really buy into that because I think that if you lie, you have an intention of deceiving someone. And I don't think that, and this is a longer philosophical sort of discussion perhaps, but I don't think that ChatGPT has a conscious, so I don't think it's conscious about that it's trying to or it's giving you the wrong answer. It's just programmed to do this. It tries to solve 
what it's programmed to do as best as it possibly can. And sometimes, yeah, then it makes up stuff. And obviously you should never use it as an independent decision making thing. So you should never rely solely, as I said, given obviously this, but you should never solely rely on, on ChatGPT for its decision making. You should use it as one part of your sort of bigger puzzle. Could be a significant significant part, but you should always lay the last piece yourself. So never use it as this is the <laughs> sort of you, you take that advice and you just run with it. Don't do that. Just Take it, look at it and make your own suggestion. It's not suitable for and it's not programmed to and it's not really functioning yet as a sort of sole independent decision maker. Yeah, think about that. And then obviously we can discuss this endlessly, but work in general, what will it mean for work in general? And what will it mean for, yeah, for society as a whole when we introduce things like this? And I don't just mean ChatGPT, but AI in general. When, what will it mean for people in our organizations? And also how do we make sure that we keep our people up to date with what's happening in the overarching landscape of now then ChatGPT and other models such as, because I think we have a responsibility as well to upskill and maintain our, our people's capabilities around this as well. So that's something also that I'm spending a lot of time of thinking about, okay, how do we, how do we create this environment where we openly share how we're using ChatGPT and also how do we then make it a part of our workdays. And as said, I think I've said, what are hallucinations? Hallucinations is that it creates, it makes up stuff. It, it, for example, I've seen examples where it, it makes up that, oh, you're a famous scientist, for example, which I'm not. So it makes up because it's closely related name-wise or age-wise or whatever. So it hallucinates uh, on that one. And if you want links to the ready-made prompts, here's the one. And don't drop your stuff in, in the comment section. Oh, someone Mark Strong is offensive. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry that I, I'm unable to monitor the chat at the same time, but I see people have, have nudged LinkedIn about it. So I'm hopeful that they will take care about it, take care about it as well. But okay, so we pondered a bit around this as well, that what does this mean for us in HR? And we pondered a bit about it, but okay, let's go a bit deeper around this as well. And I asked my LinkedIn community, I know this is the sample size here is not representative, but I think I got 500 responses or something like that. So I asked, how often do you use ChatGPT in your work? And that the division is like, uh, some people use it every day and some people use it every week, but then we also have uh, a slight majority that uh, at least have tried it, but or never tries it. So that's still the largest chunk of, of the, uh, at least than my LinkedIn population. But why do I show this? Yeah, I show this because going back to what I talked about around upskill, I think we have a responsibility here to upskill our employees and make them aware that these technologies exist and also lower the threshold for them to yeah, but to enter this sort of new era around how generative AI, ChatGPT and others will impact the workforce. Because we could up, end up in a situation where we have, for example, we have performance-based performance compensation and you have uh, half of your workforce utilizing ChatGPT and getting 30 to 50% more effective throughout the next coming six months. And you have someone who's, yeah, we rarely use it. And they, there are at best on, on the same level in terms of productivity, but then you have one then a cohort just running forward with it as they utilize these technologies and one that's not using, utilizing. And what responsibility does the individual have and what does the responsibility do we as a company then have to make sure that we're catching everyone and we're giving this everyone the same opportunities. And I think we do have responsibility as HR to make sure that we upskill our people and make sure that they are aware of, okay, these technologies exist and this is how we at this company uses, for example, ChatGPT. Yeah. So that's, what I, well, that's why I wanted to show this thing. And how do, you then, how do you do that then? Yeah, I think first and foremost, be curious. And I think you're here, over a thousand people are here and that you have a curious mindset and that you're curious to learn more. And you spark that curiosity within your organization as well. And that you educate yourself and your team around this. And there, there's a ton of podcasts that you can listen to. There will be, this will be recorded if you want this and if you find it interesting. But yeah, I think just generally be aware, okay, this is happening. How do I stay up to date? How do I learn more about this?
and put it on the agenda. If you put it on the agenda and say, okay, this is something we need to talk about, and you can start with your HR team, or you can start with even your lead team or the board, wherever you see it fit, but you, that you put it on the agenda. And I don't solely mean that for the sake of giving, yeah, re resonating with HR about this. I, it could be also a broader company topic on how do we use generative AI in our products and whatnot, but definitely, for your staff. Okay, how do we utilize this? I said, like, how do we make sure that we reap the benefits of everything that's happening here? And then policies and a question mark. Perhaps you should, you should have some kind of policy. I believe that is needed as of now. Uh, so people know the guardrails. Okay, what can I do and what can I not do? I'm very certain that you shouldn't ban it because as we will sh shortly see, there will be things coming our way that we need to handle anyhow. So I think it's better to shape the policies around, okay, be mindful, be open, and just sensitive of what you share. But yeah, don't ban it. That would be my advice at least. But yeah, hey, I've been wrong before. So <laughs> feel free to not listen to my advice. And I think also what you should do in the HR team is to discuss the ethical considerations. As said, like how to make sure that we upskill our, all our people. Where do we use it? Do we use it for performance management or not? Do we, do we use it in recruitment? Do we, do we have a bot that sort of selects people or whatnot? But that you think through all the cases where, okay, this might apply here, this might not apply here. And for the long run, I don't think we will need to do this in 10 years. But right now, when we have this technology that is on the verge of breaking in, in and infusing in almost every parts of our lives, I think it's very important that we have this discussion. So we're mindful and we're owning and we're thinking and pondering about, okay, how do we want to do it? What's our stance? How do we perceive uh, ChatGPT and AI in our workplace? So you have that grounded and thoroughly thought through at your workplace. And also I think you should inform employees and candidates if AI is being used. Once again, like if you extrapolate the line here, I don't think that's needed in a couple of years. But as of now, I think you need to inform your employees and candidates that, hey, this is now the performance management, the yearly performance management cycle is now uh, overlooked by AI, for example. Just to note so people know, and also that you go back then to you, whatever vendor you're using and ask, okay, how does this work? And that they can explain the ins and outs of their AI model. So they're also held accountable for what's happening when you, you uh, internalize such tool. And I said things are coming us way, our way. This is the one of the most prominent thing that is coming our way. So Microsoft Copilot, it's basically chat GPT infused in all your Microsoft products. And this is, it's already dropped in, in many companies or many companies is maybe an exaggeration, but it's dropped in a selected few companies that, are, that have started to use it and to feedback it and sort of, yeah, work with Microsoft to develop the product. And the timeline is unknown, but as they've now selected these beta companies that they work with for quite a while, I think that this will come, I would guess, if not this year, then early next year. And then you have no, almost no, I, I don't know if Microsoft will actually give you a choice or not, but yeah, it's coming your way one way or another. And now you're thinking about, okay, so I use Google, so I'm safe, you're not. So this is a Google's Duet AI, where it's basically the same thing. So for example, in this case, they're creating a giraffe standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. I don't know why you should do that, but still it's like Copilot, you have a companion in all Google's apps that can help you create whatever you need to create. If that's a giraffe or if that's a form in Excel, whatever it might be, it's there to help you. So we will, because I use Google, we will get it as well. So this is coming your way and as said, I think it's better to be prepared and try to think and ponder about this now versus later. So yeah. And then when I talk about this, people say, okay, yeah, but Microsoft, Google, whatnot, do you have any other examples? And I have, and this is by far my favorite use case. I'm in no way affiliated with them. I've interviewed their CEO once, that's all, but this is called MetaView. And Meta, what MetaView is, does is exactly as it stands here, it's automatic AI generated interview notes. So it's basically takes notes for you during the interview. So all you have to do is listen to the person, ask thoughtful questions, 
and then MetaView will take care of the rest. Which for someone who is, and you can probably tell that this is not, this is a good use case for me because I'm a lousy note taker. And so <laughs> fantastic use case and a fantastic, fantastic tool. So you should really, uh, I said, I'm not earning uh, anything about this. It's just, it, it's a good product. And this is not a good product and I'm and in no way affiliated with any products I use uh, or I talk about, which perhaps is stupid, but yeah, it is what it is. And uh, it's a help desk and it powers, uh, it powers a, a very AI, a powerful AI tool that sort of helps you answer the most time consuming questions straight off the bat. So if someone asks like, oh, how many vacation days do I have? And then it just magically appears. You don't need to leave Slack, for example. So you can chat with Ariglad through Slack or Teams or whatever you use. Fantastic, saves a lot of time for us HR people. And the last one is uh, Dover uh, Autopilot. And uh, Dover is an automated uh, sort of sourcer, you can almost say. So it sources people. And if someone would have asked me like a year ago, oh, these automatic sourcing tools, are they good or not? I would say, oh, they're hopeless. Like it's just one generic pile of whatever. It's not good. But nowadays they're actually good because they customize it through the power of OpenAI and ChatGPT and such to be more closely connected to the person that they're actually reaching out to. So now it's becoming good. And one can always argue that, okay, what will happen later down the line? I don't know that yet, but I think we will see more of these use cases. And yeah, there's probably a ton of other products that I'm missing out on now. And if you have suggestions on products, please send them to me. I'm always happy to learn more about products and see what they can do because I'm very curious around how this will evolve. But that was at least some products connected to that. And finally then, if we think, think, think about the future, what do we, yeah, what do we think the future has in store? Which is always very hard to predict, but I'll give, a, I'll give it a try and then we can circle back here in a couple of years and see how I did. Yeah, but this is my favorite quote of all times. So we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run and underestimate the effect in the long run. And I think that is very true for everything that's happening with AI and ChatGPT and whatever we call it now. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's marvelous to see how far the development have come. And I think I ha still have to hold myself back every time because I think, oh, next year, like next year, we will be out of a job next year. But I don't actually think that when I sit down and ponder a bit, because I think that in the short run, in the next coming years, we will get more effic efficiency out of ourselves and our coworkers and whatnot. And productivity will most likely uh, go up, or hopefully at least. But I think we're safe in the next sort of 10, three, four years. But if I think long term, and if I really think hard long term, yeah, I think there might be a chance that we that HR won't exist. And I won't dwell on that too much. And also that's a bit sad on a sad note to end with. But yeah, there's, I think we overestimate, and I wrote about this last week, but I think there's an, we overestimate sometimes the human part of ourselves. Yes, we are humans, obviously, but what managers usually are looking for is an answer or someone to hear them. And if you can create a human-like experience that always hears them out, will they go to HRBP then? I'm not sure. Not saying that it should be that way where we, uh, that's the future we want. But yeah, it, I definitely see the possibility of that. But yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting future at least. And I think also thinking more in short term, I think <coughs> ChatGPT and similar technologies, they, it will be a thing. Like if, I, if we meet here in a year, I think we will still talk about ChatGPT, but I think we will start to internalize them long term. And I think that they will blend into all products that we use, as we see with the Copilot and Vet, for example. I think they will blend into almost every aspect of every product that we're using. So we won't talk about, if we meet here in 10 years, I don't think we will talk about prompts or whatever it might be. I think that we will be past that then. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's what I believe at least. And I also think, and now I see that my camera is, is in the way here, but on-premises solutions, it's solutions of, beneath me here. So on-premises solutions. I think we will have internalized sort of ChatGPT versions running internally within our companies. And we already see that sort of spinning up. Because obviously one of the main issues that we have with ChatGPT is that it's you can't share sensitive information and you can't utilize it to its full potential. 
But if you run an on-prem solution, which sort of computes solely on your own, with on your own ecosystem and never leaves your own ecosystem, obviously, then you can ask it whatever you want. You can do calculations on your latest quarterly report. You can do whatever you want, basically, if you run it on-prem. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my belief at least. But once again, might be wrong here. And I think we'll be fine. I truly think we will be fine. And I saw someone mention like we won't be, humans won't be, AI won't be replacing humans. It will be humans that are more efficient by AI, which I believe, I believe to be true short term. Long term, not that sure. We're seven months into this now. So that's, it's not super long, but we'll see. I think, however, that we need to shape the future and not the other way around. So I believe it's crucial that we now do as we, we are here. We shape the future. We don't let the future happen, that we discuss this. You've now been receiving my perceptions and I've seen all the comments. I, it's a lot of comments. I'll try to read them, but it's a lot of comments. I'll try to read them and go through them. But what I'm keen on, as I said, is to get the discussion going. That's what I'm most keen on, that we start talking about this and that we inform ourselves and that HR for once is in the driver's seat, that we drive this development, that this is an HR question. And we in HR, we take responsibility for this and we just don't let it happen because we've seen what hap when we, what's happening when we let stuff happen. <laughs> If you think about social media, obviously we took a bit of a backseat position on that one. We tried to regulate it when we tried to stop it. And yeah, what happened? Like it was tech people defining this as whatever they defined it. And then we had Cambridge Analytica and whatnot. So we need to be in here. We need to be part of this discussion. And this will, AI is such a pivotal moment, as I said, for humanity and we need people like us in HR, not saying everyone in HR is brilliant, most of us are, but I'm saying that we have perspectives that are important to these discussions and we need to get them in there. We need to be in this discussion and we need to help shape this. So that's my hope for the future. So how, and how do we do that then? Yeah, but it's like this, that we start informing us and we discuss and we say, yeah, that's a good perspective. I like that, but do you know what? I have another perspective and we, that we are fine with not agreeing with each other as well. And I've seen that people, they don't agree with me. And I love that. Like I've seen it in the comments. That's fantastic because development happens that we, w development happens when we don't agree with each other, but we build on each other's ideas saying, oh, you have parts that are really good and I will come with my bit as well. And I'll add that to your piece and then, oh, that's a good piece. That's a good match. We'll make it stronger. So that's what I'm hoping for with all of this. Exactly how we do this. I don't know, but uh, it's a start that we're here, right? So I hope that's at least a part, like the first step on a long journey, perhaps. And that's what I had today. This is a passion of mine. 